Good morning, all you wonderful YouTubers. Hey, this is the Virginia Bushcrafter. Hey, uh, thank you for joining in with me this morning. I'm just out here in the bush, Mother's Nature, just again to learn and practice bushcrafting, prepping, and survival skills. So, I am out here just for uh, a specified reason, to show step by step on how to construct an enclosed tarp shelter. So uh, I recently did that on another video, but I want to show you step by step. And then I'm going to emphasize the four main things, which will, which is shelter, water, food, and fire. Now, not in that particular order, but that's what I'm going to be concentrating on today. So uh, as you can see, this is my location. I've been here before. So, very familiar with it. So, I am going to uh, pull out the equipment and we are going to get started. Hey guys, so what I'm going to do right now is build a shelter, again, that is constructed from a 10 by 10 tarp. So again, we all know that shelter is the utmost importance, whether it's rain, snow, sleet, or shine. Starting with our clothing and moving outward. So I am going to demonstrate how to put a shelter a, a shelter together which is an enclosed um, it is an enclosed shelter tarp and I'm going to start off doing this with again the 10 by 10 a trekking pole and four tent pegs so let me put you in focus and we're going to start All right guys, I hope you can see me from here, but the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to stake down the rear corners. So that's one corner and the second corner. And you wanna make sure that the tarp is in a straight line. Okay guys, so again, the left corner and the right corner is fully staked down. So now, I am going to go to the front. Now, let's see if I can. Okay, I'm going to go to the front. I am going to grab the right corner. Uh, uh, grommet and I'm also going to take the left grommet and I'm going to bring those together so I'm going to bring them together and I'm going to put a tent stake in it in them this is going to create the door. So, let's get this tent stake out. A 
Now notice, you want to try to make sure that this is in a uh, triangle. So again, I have the two front, uh, the right and the left grommet stake, stake down. And this creates your opening. You can see it's starting to form. This creates your opening. Now, I am going to uh, put the uh, trekking pole in. So I am going to use a bandana as extra precaution on top of the trekking pole. So, I am going to disappear for a quick minute. And in I go. All right, guys. So let me show this to you. So again, in a triangular form, you can see the inside of the shelter. Now. The door actually closes over here. So let me just give you a quick look so far. So guys, what I'm going to do now, uh, by using one more stake, that actually closes the door but I am going to secure it uh, with more stakes. So, again, this is the right and left grommet together. Comes in the, mid in the middle of the tarp to form a triangle. And from the rear, The left is staked down and the right is staked down. So I'm going to make it somewhat more secure by staking out the back even further.
So guys, I'm going to uh, go ahead out, go ahead and make this much more secure, and uh, then we're going to enjoy this. All right, guys, this is the completed tarp shelter, the enclosed tarp sh shelter. So again, real quickly, what I want to show you is that, again, these two grommets are the left and the right brought to the center of the tarp, and they're staked down together. left rear corner is staked down as well as the right grommet in the corner is staked down and to secure it all the tie outs in the back have been staked down they have been staked down as well as all of the tie downs on the outside you see it here and here so now also it does have a door and the door you open the door just by removing a tent peg there and you're now able to enter so again just bring the very top the middle grommet all the way over to the right or to the left and if it was lower, I could stake it here, but because of its height, I can stake it down right here. So, as you can see, and the door is closed, and you can see you are fully enclosed. Now, once you're inside, you can also close it from the inside. So I'm going to hop into it and I'm going to demonstrate that. Hey guys, so I am uh, actually in the tarp now, in the tarp shelter right, shelter right now. And um, I am fully enclosed. So, again, just take a look around real quick. This is definitely sufficient for one person. And two can fit in here as well. But, um, again, guys, this is just a shelter that uh, if you don't have a ridge line, you can use a trekking pole. If you don't have a trekking pole, you can use a, a limb. Um, and cut it to the uh, specified length that you need. Uh, have a minimum of four stakes and you are good to go. However, again, I used all the stakes, all the tie downs, all the grommets to secure it. So again, so let me show you the door, uh, how I will exit from here because I did close it. May can see from here. Let's see if I can just show you. I just put them in my hand here. Remove this tent peg. And the door opens. So guys, you can actually see there is a door that you can enter 
and exit. All right, guys, just wanted to show you this. We're gonna go on to the next task, but I'm gonna tell you a few more things about this shelter. Hey guys, I wanna show you one other thing about this shelter. I did pull the back out to create more room by using a toggle and um, I tied it off to a tree, which I use a trucker's hitch to do so. So that's just to uh, give me more room on the inside. But guys, again, we know with bushcrafting, shelter is the utmost importance. Whether it's a lean-to, A-frame, uh, debris shelter, tarp, tent, we know that shelter is important. And the next thing that is very important is staying hydrated. That is why water is so important. Now, I do have sufficient water with me, but what I am hydrating with right now is a sports drink. And I will continue to hydrate with this in t uh, until lunch or until it's, until it's uh, completely empty, which it will be. And then I will go on to my water. So the next thing I'm going to do now is that we know that we have to have food, but in order to cook the food, we need fire. And in, and in order to have fire, we need to harvest and process some wood. So that is the next step. And as you can see, there is an immense amount of wood in this area. Hey guys, just wanna go over the four elements again. Your shelter, and definitely water. It's definitely needed today, with sports drink, along with just water. And there is food, but we know we have to have a fire to uh, pre prepare food. But so I've been harvesting some wood. I've built a fire lay, fire lay over there and have kindling and fuel. But I wanted to show you this amazing fat wood that I, that I got. You can see the resin here. This is really good here. Fat wood there. See the fat wood here. Fat wood here. And fat wood here. And a few other pieces. So guys, the next thing that I'm going to do, I am going to make some feather sticks and I am going to use a Gerber LM LMF2. Um, this is a knife let's see, that uh, has serrated edges. And many people are not, not fond of serrated edges, but I am. This is a, um, let's just see, this is a four inch blade and you can see the serrations there. has a nice pommel to it or a hammer. The grip is awesome. The grip is really good on, on this. So uh, I'm going to uh, make some fat wood with this and I'm basically going to be using the serrated edges to show you how functional they are. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, put you in focus. Hey guys, before I make the feather sticks with this Gerber LM LMF2, I have to baton the wood. So I'm going to let you, uh, we're going to do that, do that together. And then we're going to make feather sticks with this knife that has serrations. So let me put you in focus.
think that would serve me much better. Less movement. Okay, so you basically have the idea, but uh, once I make a lot of these and make them very, very thin, then we're gonna make us some feather sticks. Hey guys, I've managed to uh, split this wood using the Gerber LMF2. And so I've made quite a few uh, pieces of kindling that's gonna be uh, made into fat sticks. So let me just show you real quick, just some of it. have quite a bit here but all of this was made with the LMF2 but in particular I want to show you just look at the resin on this wood look at the resin look at all of this fat wood right here and on this piece You can see the resin, resin right here as well. So all of this is fat wood that I've harvested. So now let's just make some feather sticks. And again, I am using the serrated edge of the LMF2. Let's see if you can. I think this is pretty good curls with serrated edges. with serrated edges. Alright guys, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a lot more of these. But again, feather sticks.
so again I am a fan or an advocate that any cutting tool that you put into your hand it is greatly advisable to be able to use it 100% efficiently uh, ju just as best you can again I know the serrated edge may not be a fan for many but I truly enjoy using a serrated edge uh, this is half of it serrated this is a four inch blade half of it is serrated the other half is just more or less of a saber grind so I'm going to make more of these feather sticks and that's uh, then we're going to make the fire so we have covered shelter water the fire and we're going to get to the food feather sticks and a feather stick that is just oozing with resin so I'm going to see if I can get that one started first and then I am going to add the other feather sticks There it goes. The resin from the inside is just unbelievable. If you notice all of the uh, black smoke and by adding other feather sticks. All right, guys, everything from Mother Nature. And I have more feather sticks, more fat wood. All right, guys, so let's let this uh, burn into some coals, and we're going to have a quick meal. Hey, guys, while the uh, fire is uh, producing some coals, I'm going to start preparing my meal. And today, it is just some mashed potatoes. So I'm going to start off with, of course, just boiling some water, two cups of water. Then I'm going to put into So the only thing this water has to do is just come to a boil. So I'm going to put this on the fire and the meal is going to be really, really quick. So just going to boil some water and add some potatoes but in the meantime I'm going to start on the salad hey guys as you can see the um, the water is almost to a boil but in the meantime I am going to have this so uh, This is what I'm going to have until
So guys, again, shelter, water, food, and fire. Four elements of bushcrafting. That, that's just the beginning. That is just the beginning. So guys, I'm gonna be right back. Hey guys, well, the uh, salad was very good. Um, just a regular salad. And now I'm on the mashed potatoes with lemon pepper and oregano. Of course I had to let it cool down a bit. And this is gonna fill me up for the for the time that I'm going to be here. But again, I just wanted to focus on four things. Shelter, water, which I did bring my water with me to make sure I have sufficient uh, water. I have two of these. One is designated for putting out the fire. However, the ground is wet, so that won't be an issue. And food, I just had a salad and I'm having mashed potatoes. And of course, to eat, I needed a fire and the fun part of the fire this time was actually actually using serrated edges the serrated edge on the Gerber LMF2 and another good thing is that the fat wood was actually harvested from this location and that was the only uh, kindling that I did you that I used was the uh, fat wood that I secured here and uh, I took a couple of strikes but it's still burning and I have way more, I'm just looking at it now, I have way more fat wood left than, than is necessary. So um, that's gonna go in my backpack when I leave. But guys, I'm just having my meal. Hey, come back and join me for coffee time. Everything is delicious in the bush. All right, guys, see you in a few. Hey, guys, so um, I have basically completed everything that I wanted to do today. Uh, again, I wanted to uh, focus on shelter, water, food, and a fire. And uh, I think what was amazing for me today is that uh, I used a uh, Gerber LMF2 uh, with hat that has a a partial serrated edge uh, and the uh, forward edge is uh, a um, saber grind and I made feather sticks with the serrated edge now a lot of people are not advocates of a uh, serrated edge or serrations but uh, they work very well uh, for me they, they they work very well and they make fantastic feather sticks but I will still say that it is not the knife or is not the cutting tool. It is the hands that uh, the tool is in. So it's just basically improving your skills. And I think in order to improve your skills, it is much um, better or way more advantageous to come out into the bush and practice these skills you can be comfortable practicing them at home and I've done that before and I encourage that but I think getting out in the bush practicing your skills is absolutely no substitute so I think that was the I think that's what I'm mostly I'm most pleased with today is uh, making feather sticks with a serrated edge and finding so much fat wood um, Fatwood is just, I mean, I think it's the number one tender. And uh, I, I, I had a lot of fatwood. I have used it all. Uh, the fire is gone out. So it's time for me to pack up and um, wait for my next adventure. My uh, cooking, part of my cooking utensil is drying out. It has been washed. 
my scrubbing pad, my shovel, canteen, my rucksack, and all the other good stuff here. But uh, this is a shelter I built. Um, and again, it, it requires practice. But um, again, what I found out and by actually coming out here and practicing, the height of your pole on the inside, the height of your pole really affects the sides here. But once you get in, I mean, the, the main purpose of it is to shelter you from the um, elements. And I think, again, one of the great things about this shelter is that it is a tarp and you will be fully enclosed and it has a door so um, that was something I practiced today for shelter uh, I brought my water with me I brought my food I did not uh, have to source any water I uh, did not forge any food but I did uh, do all the parts of the fire you know the combustion making the tender the, uh, the kindling the tender and the fuel and had a sustainable fire so guys just want to show you this area before I start to pack up this fire is going to be uh, totally out uh, it's it's still warm so but it won't be a problem because I do have water that that is designated for extinguishing the fire or to ensure that the fire is properly extinguished so I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna see you guys on my uh, trek out All right, YouTubers. Hey, I have completed my practice for today. Hey, as always, it's been fun. I encourage you to uh, get out in the bush and, enjoy, and just enjoy Mother Nature. With that said, like father and son, mother and daughter, human and nature, we are all akin in some form or fashion. Get out in the bush and have some fun. Stay safe, and I will see you on the next video. Virginia Bushcrafter, signing out.